And we do want to bring out some uh, breaking news for you right now. Vice President Walter Mondale dies at 93. Uh, this is all according to his family right now. The Minnesota former vice president's long career in politics was highlighted by serving uh, under Jimmy Carter. I'm going to bring in our very own Andrew Kraft to give us a little bit of an idea of what his storied career was like. Again, this just coming out uh, in the past couple of minutes here on News Now from Fox. Andrew, uh, let's talk about this and what Mo Walter Mondale's career was like. Yeah, Daytona, uh, as you know, like you just said, uh, most Americans will remember him as President Jimmy Carter's vice, uh, vice president. We're just getting a statement in Fox's from former President Carter saying, quote, today I mourn the passing of my dear friend Walter Mondale, who I consider the best, best vice president in our country's history. During our administration, Fritz used his political skill and personal integrity to transform the vice presidency into a, dy a dynamic policy driving force that had never been seen before uh, and still exists today. And so uh, a very sad day, especially for those in Minnesota, in the halls of power in the Twin Cities. Daytona, he served as the U.S. Senator from Minnesota from 1964 to 1976. Uh, and then uh, Carter tapped him to serve as his vice president. Uh, and most Americans will also remember him uh, because he went after the presidency in his own bid. He became the Democratic nominee in 1984, uh, picking Geraldine Ferraro, the female congresswoman from New York. She was the first female uh, running mate on a major party ticket. Uh, but uh, as you know, uh, many Americans will remember that famously and historically, uh, the Mondale Ferraro ticket lost uh, to then President Reagan uh, in a historic landslide there in 84. Mondale only won his home state, Daytona, Minnesota, and the District of Columbia. Reagan took the rest, so it was a historic landslide. He then went on to serve uh, in former President Clinton's administration as the ambassador to Japan. Uh, Axios reported today that Mondale just spoke by phone to President Biden just yesterday. Uh, because, as the family said, this was very, very imminent. And so it's a very sad day, not only in Minnesota, but also in the halls of power in, in Washington, D.C. He'll be remembered uh, as a liberal stalwart, a progressive icon in the Democratic Party, uh, and, and former U.S. vice president uh, to Jimmy Carter, who uh, Jimmy Carter is well into his 90s issuing that statement today. We have uh, a great uh, just look back at Walter Mondale's life from Fox News correspondent Mike Tobin. How many people get a chance to spend all those years in that kind of work serving the greatest democracy in the world? Can't beat that. In 1946, at the tender age of 20, young Walter Mondale helped manage the U.S. Senate campaign of another young Democrat, the then mayor of Minneapolis, Hubert Humphrey. We put together a movement. And uh, the people that were on the other side got irritated with us and called us the Diaper Brigade. But we prevailed. With his bride, Joan Adams Mondale, at his side, Mondale got his undergraduate and law degrees from the University of Minnesota and then went to work as an attorney. In 1960, Mondale was appointed to the vacant job of state attorney general. Four years later, Hubert Humphrey left his U.S. Senate seat when he was elected vice president, and Mondale, aged 36, was tapped to fill the void. And I am proud to go to Washington to join the Johnson-Humphrey team. But Mondale quickly distinguished himself as a civil rights champion and as a politician, twice winning re-election to the Senate. Then in 76, when Georgia Governor Jimmy Carter captured the Democratic presidential nomination, Mondale got a call. We had a talk about what he had in mind. I was not interested in a ceremonial job. I wanted to be a part of things, uh, uh, supporting the president. And so the Grits and Fritz ticket was born, running against Republican Robert President Robert Gerald Robert Ford and his vice Robert presidential Robert pick, Bob. Senator Bob Dole. I remember I tried to stay up all night and we were waiting for, you know, the election to be over. And 
finally went to bed and then someone banged on the door and said, get up you guys, you know, your dad's vice president. Wow! <laughs> the Carter-Mondale administration would face four extremely difficult years. The Soviets invaded Afghanistan and the world oil crisis led to soaring gas prices and inflation at home. The tough times paved the way for Republican challenger Ronald Reagan to win the White House in 1980. Thank you. When you work so hard, 18-hour days and so on, trying to make your case and just see it slip away. Four years later, Mondale captured the Democratic presidential nomination. But America was in the midst of an economic boom, and Reagan had become a very popular president and a very good campaigner. I will not make age an issue of this campaign. I am not going to exploit, for political purposes, my opponent's youth and inexperience. I like the campaign. I love campaign. Uh, but I don't think I was very good at television. Mondale did make history in the 84 campaign, choosing a woman running mate, Geraldine Ferraro, the first female vice presidential candidate on a major party ticket. This might uh, reshuffle the deck and we might make a game out of it. Instead, Reagan won re-election in a landslide. Mondale took just one state, Minnesota. Mondale later did a stint as ambassador to Japan, then returned to Minnesota, going into private law practice. It was a much quieter life until one late October morning in 2002. A small plane crashed in northern Minnesota. Among the killed was Democratic U.S. Senator Paul Wellstone. With less than two weeks to the election, the Wellstone family reached out to Mondale to take the place of the fallen senator on the ballot. The next United States Senator from Minnesota, Walter Mondale. At age 74, Mondale was suddenly in an abbreviated U.S. Senate race up against Republican Norm Coleman. But for the very first time, Walter Mondale lost a statewide race in Minnesota. In his concession speech, Mondale pinned the blame for the loss on himself. I take responsibility for this result. It's on my shoulders. No, no, this, this is the way it should be. Uh, it, I, this, is, this is the result that the people of Minnesota have every right to make. In his later years, Mondale would make occasional campaign cameos for fellow Democrats. To the end, Walter Mondale's love and loyalty belonged to his family, his friends, his state, and his country. In Chicago, Mike Tobin, Fox News. And Andrew, as you might expect, lots of politicians uh, sending their thoughts and prayers over social media. We're hearing from several politicians tonight, correct? That's right, Daytona. Uh, the tweets uh, and the tributes are, are pouring in at the moment from a lot of uh, lawmakers and elected officials. Just want to read one to you uh, from the current senator from Minnesota, Amy Klobuchar. She's tweeting tonight, Walter Mondale was a true public servant and my friend and mentor. He set a high bar for himself and kept passing it and raising it, passing it and raising it. As Minnesota Attorney General, Senator, Vice President, Ambassador and Presidential Candidate, he was kind and dignified to the end. And Daytona will be monitoring all these reactions uh, to the news tonight uh, of the death of former Vice President Walter Mondale at the age of 93. All right. Thank you, Andrew, for uh, giving us that update. Speaking of Minneapolis, we have uh, a shot right here. Totally different story.